I like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. It's Netflix time. Vincent Zo, episode 15. Spoiler alert, let's get it. So when we last left off, three killers from Italy was about to get Vin done. But trust me, you're not even going to believe how he gets out of this predicament. Remember his bird friend that always pops up by his window? Well, apparently at that particular moment, he was rolling deep with a whole flock of birds. And they distracted these niggas long enough for Vin to get the upper hand and get him done deal dead. Really? A bunch of birds? Coincidentally, at this time? I mean, realistically, it could happen, but between all the stuff I've seen in this show, that is the fakest thing I've seen. <laughs> Well, as he's coming downstairs, he does everything in his power to keep Chai from going upstairs. Meanwhile, back at Babel, Sehan's mad, which means everybody's in trouble. And he just found out that Vincent Zoe is still alive. He is beyond pissed off. Then they make matters worse for Sehan. They got a police report and a uh, warrant for his arrest, and they finally got him. He's getting locked up for real. They got enough charges on him. Don Dale, he's about to go to jail. You can breathe a sigh of relief for now. Or maybe not. Meanwhile, Vince thinking of bird for dear life. As he should, then Vin gets the news that Sehan has been arrested, feeling pretty good about himself. Meanwhile, Chai's in the house and she's reading the card that Vin's mom gave her. What it said, we don't know yet. Everybody's not watching the news, waiting for the celebration. But an unexpected turn of events occurs. Turns out the inspector has been bought out by Babel. Which means the evidence is gone, charges dropped, all six of them. What in all of the fuck made him do this decision? Well, it's got a lot to do with this man right here, the chief inspector. Happy faces at Babel, and happy brothers over here. You know Chai's pissed the fuck off. See, she threw a mug at the TV. Yeah, man, all that work down the shitter. You know, Chai at this point is ready to go destroy niggas, but Vince stops her. Talks about having a clear head if you're gonna go out there for revenge. But why is he so calm? Is he just used to it because he's in the mafia? Or does he somehow have an ace up his sleeve? And of course, this turncoat has a talk with the Inspector General. Come to find out, the Chief didn't have that much to do with his decision. When he was in the car that night locking up Sehan, he cut him a deal saying, I'll discard all the evidence if you make me the general of the police force. He's like, that's it? Done deal. You already know what it is. And now, oh shit, I just thought of something. Now that Sehan was working with the cop who was working with Chow, he has a good idea of what a guillotine file is. If he gets his hands on that, he'll be untouchable. He goes back to his home and sees Vin in his kitchen. Oh shit. Chilling with his family, eating spaghetti and shit. They talk outside. He's like, please don't hurt my family. You do whatever you want to me. He's like, I ain't gonna kill you just yet. I'm gonna let you get everything you want and then kill you. That's a wild shit to say to somebody. Back in the office, the brothers are having words. And Sehan's like, man, just get some shit done. And because Sehan's getting more powerful, Wang's usefulness is starting to become limited. Later on, Vin and Chai go shopping for his mom. They go to a little coffee shop. And then Chai exposes the fact that she knows that that's Vin's mom. He's like, what? How'd you know? She says she's known for quite a while now. I mean, who else would keep paying for the hospital business, the medical bills, all that other stuff, if they weren't somewhere related to somebody? Then they go visit her to give her a purse. And she's been feeling so good lately that she actually wants to have a retrial. She wants to be free because honestly, she knows she doesn't have that much time left. Come on, Vin. Just go ahead and tell her who you are to her, man. Back at Babel, Sehong's talking to this guy named Mi Hong. I mean, Ji Hong. Ji Hong is the CEO of Wu Sang, who we know was partnering up with Bad Bell. They talk in business and it feels like everything is falling right in line to what they want. Back at the office, Chai is like, seriously, like, Ben, why are you so calm about everything right now? Because Lin actually had the guillotine file on him the entire time. What the fuck? How? Well, apparently back when Vin and Cho was trying to get the gold, unbeknownst to Cho, Vin slipped it in his pocket. Wow, I didn't even see him do that shit. So that's why he wasn't making a big fuss about the cop turning on him. But since his file is so important, he's going to come up with a plan to make sure everybody fights over it. Back at the office, Jun and Wang are frustrated about his brother gaining so much more power. They're trying to figure out what to do, but they really don't know. Desperate for help, he comes to the two people that shouldn't give a rat's ass about him, Vin and Chai. He talks about how he wants to take over the business and run it the right way. For one, they don't believe him. Two, they don't think he's smart enough to be able to run the business. Back at Babel, Seon tells Mion about everything that's gone down. Mion's like, Vin's been trying to take everything away from you, so why don't you start taking stuff away from him? But I'm lying, they're going to start digging up some dirt. Back at the office, Vin gives Wang three business questions to answer, which he failed all three questions. He's like, if you can't get those simple questions right, you can't handle the business. You gotta get out. Get on out of here. You ain't doing nothing. Back at the bar, they still coming up with plans. Mion puts the idea in his head about digging up family members' stuff, which means they're probably going to target his mom. Meanwhile, they find out Babel is trying to raise their assistance with Wu Sang. And they learn Wu Sang is ran by Ji Hong. And they give us this backstory about him killing his brother. Yeah, don't nobody care about their brothers or families over in this side of the town. But they learn that his one weakness is reading into fortunes and gypsies. Which his advisor is this guy. So of course our squad kidnaps this nigga. And they get to interrogate and getting all that information. And then they take a vote and obviously the entire squad picks Vin to be the gypsy. Meanwhile, Gion tries to call it his advisor. But he's so damn traumatized he can't even use him right now. So he hears about an ad in the paper. Obviously they're pretending to be a clinic. He goes on in. Here's Vin, ready to read fortunes. Basically, he tells him you gotta break ties with Babel, renounce all their works, or you'll only have five days to live. 
Like I said, he believes in that shit. So apparently during a session, Jahan told Vin about Sehan's past. Sehan had killed a couple kids when he was in high school. Matter of fact, he killed a lot of people. But the people he rolled with just kept covering up the situation. And on top of that, the people he killed, he would just collect their watches. Every watch he has is off a dead person's hands. And trust me, he has a lot of watches. So if you didn't already know by now, you're dealing with a psychopath. Sehan gets a call from Keon. He is highly pissed off that Vion is backing out. Somebody laughs like that after hearing bad news, you can tell there's something not right in his head. Later on, he goes back to Vin again for more advice. But at this point, he's just giving Vin a whole bunch of information, everything he's asking for. They all just watching the news, pissed off at everything that they're saying right now. Afterwards, Vin gets a call from Cho telling him to meet up. So Cho gets to the spot. Then all of a sudden, Carl almost runs him over. These guys come out, he's kicking ass. Then he gets cut and winds up in some deep shit. But then Vin comes in the nick of time to save him. Their number one guess is that Sehan sent these guys. Back at Babel, Mion did some digging and she found uh, Vin's mom's records. Not only that, they know where the gold and the guillotine file is and they got ready to destroy the damn plaza. The only thing Sehan doesn't know is that how they figure out about his past. Cho tells Vin that his boss really wanted to try to um, get the file and change corruption all throughout the uh, police station, but then he got corrupted as well. He felt like he had an ulterior motive looking for the file. The thing Cho doesn't know is that Vin actually has the file. Back at the hospital, Chai's taking care of Vin's mom. Vin's about to go back to a spot. Then he sees somebody in the distance. Who's this dude? Vin's chasing him to the rooftop. The guy went to the top of the roof. Vin doesn't know where he's at. He starts looking around. Next thing you know, a body falls by the steps. Oh shit, it's Jim. The hell's he doing at the plaza? And then these cops come out of nowhere about to rush Vin. Damn it, he's been set up. And that's episode 15 for you. Slick DZ out the heezy mister. Sissy, ha 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 